Hey, today we're going to be making a simple map using QGIS. Whenever you launch up QGIS, the first thing you're going to see here is the interface. And what we have here, for example, is our layers content. We have an area here where our map's going to go to go, and we have a browser here that can help browse us to different um, data sets. Um, to make a map, um, we're going to first uh, rely on a base map. Um, it, this is just to avoid having to add in a lot of different data. And what I want to do is use a base map from OpenStreetMap. And so, in order to use in order to use base maps in QGIS, it's not a built-in function. We're going to have to add in a plugin. So, first to add in a plugin, you need to go to the Plugins menu, and then click Manage and Install Plugins. This will show you a repository of different plugins that are available. These are developed by other people, uh, sometimes maybe people even from QGIS, but it extends the capabilities of the base of QGIS. What we want to do is add in the Quick Map Services. Um, quick Map Services, which is here, um, is an easy to use um, base map um, add in. So I, I, for you, you're going to see install plugin. I've already installed it, but I'll just go ahead and reinstall it. That's going to download the data and plugin is successfully reinstalled. Once it's installed, you'll get this little icons here added to your uh, toolbars. And um, to add in a base map, we're going to click on the um, add map service. But before we do this, we'll need to um, add a map. And so um, I'm going to go ahead and so I'm going to click here on the center icon or sorry, the add map service icon. And that's going to drop down a menu of different base maps that are available. Again, base maps are kind of a stream of GIS data. You don't actually have to go and download the GIS data. It's just going to serve it up to you. I'm going to add here the OpenStreetMap standard um, when I open that up. And then I, all of a sudden I see a map that shows up here. If you pay attention here, also in your layer control, in the table of contents, you'll see here OpenStreetMap standard shows up there. I can turn it on and off, and it comes in in a standard web mercator projection. Now, um, to make things interesting, I'm going to go ahead and uh, zoom in on the United States. The best way I like to um, zoom in is to use the... Um, the zoom extent feature of a of a zoom. So if you click here with the uh, zoom tool, but the hold the mouse button, you can draw a box to what you want to zoom into. So I'm going to zoom into the United States, and whenever I let go, you'll see that it zoomed to that exact extent. Um, to try that again, I'm going to zoom here on the state of Texas, and you see here if I draw a square around the state of Texas. It will zoom in here on Texas. The next tool that I want to use will be the um, geocoding tool. And um, geocoding basically translates um, place features into longitude latitudes. Again, this will be another plugin. So to add it in, I'll go to plugin, manage and install plugins. And there I can search for the plugin that I'm looking for, which is geocoding. You can see here I have already have this installed as well, but if you click on it, what it's going to do through is, is going to allow you to type in um, addresses and it will automatically look at the geolocators that are available online to translate that into a longitude latitude. And what's kind of cool about it is that it will also go and make a point wherever it will find it. Once you add the geocoding um, plugin, you'll see the menu show up here under the plugins menu called geocoding. So here I can actually type in, uh, click the geocoding dialog and it'll ask me where do I want to find. I'm going to find Austin, Texas, the capital of Texas. And what's cool about this is that it actually finds multiple places. So here we have Austin, Travis County, Texas, Austin County. So when I look at here, 
anything that has Austin in it where Texas shows up. And you can see here a lot of places aren't falling into it. What I want to find, what I want to find is Austin, Travis County, Texas, which is the top, the top choice. So I hit OK. And what it does is it adds a point where Austin, Texas is. Nice. And so you can see here I have my labeled point. That labeled point will show up here in the layered controls as well with the geocoding plugin results. If I double click here, this will allow me to make modifications to that point. And so, for example, if I wanted to change the symbology of the point to a large green dot, I could click on the green dot and change the sizes. So if I hit OK here, you'll see that now a big green dot has, has placed where the dot used to be. Also, uh, I want to get rid of this label. So this label is coming from the geocoding plugin results attribute table. If I go here into the properties and then I look over here at the labels tab, you'll see here that it's doing a single label that's based off the values of address. What I can do is um, just change it to no labels and now we'll actually get rid of the label completely. Um, that label was showing up here because it's part of the attribute table, where if I open the attribute table, I can see here where it says address, and that's where the label is coming in from. This is useful if you're having multiple locations get geocoded, um, or if you have multiple things in your, in your, in your results to where um, you had them labeled. But in our case, we don't really need that because we just have the one, um, point being labeled. Now to move on to making the map. So this is the GIS part of the work. In order to make the map itself, what we'll have to do is add a map um, uh, map item. So if I look here in the project, under the project I can choose here a new print layout. And remember, what we're trying to do when we're making a map is that we're, tr we're truly exporting this into some kind of a print layout. So if I say new print layout, this is going to give me a blank um, page, which I can later export to uh, a map. And so what I see here is my layout now. And what I want to do first is to add the map I was working with. So if I go to add items and add map, that will give that will change my icon here to draw a box. I could place that map where I want it to go. So I'm going to draw a box here on the page, and that will end up making the map automatically put on there. Um, a few things that you might want to also do when you're making a map is to add in things like north arrows. So if I go here on this sidebar as well and look, I have options for adding in north arrows. Again, this is all going to be with the drawing of a box and that's going to put in the north arrow um, let's go ahead and also add in a um, scale bar and um, we can always position those things by clicking on them as well and then we'll go ahead and go ahead and add in a um, title so um, and whenever I click on that title I'll be able to go here to item properties and then that's where I'll be able to um, change the um, title which you can see here modifies it around here. Um, if you look down in the properties, you'll also have options here for um, changing um, things like the font or um, you know locations, the size, and so forth. So um, this is gonna be where um, you'd be able to play around with all these different settings. I suggest um, playing around with those settings on your final map. Uh, and then once you're happy with your map, you have a few options here to print it. Um, but in most cases, what you're going to be doing is exporting as an image or exporting as a PDF. And so <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and export it as a PDF. It's going to give you this weird um, error message. All it's telling you is that it's bringing this information from a server. And if it exceeds limits, um, there might be cases where you might have blank white page on it. Just pay attention to that. In our case, we're not going to have that happen. And all that's going to do is give me a... Um, place you know to say where I want to export it to. So 
So we're going to export that onto the um, desktop. And um, for the uh, special export options, um, I would just say these defaults are, are good enough. Um, I would be careful about um, uh, changing uh, some of the um, export compressions. Um, lossy is good, but if you go with lossless, you end up with a really big uh, file. So let's keep that as um, lossy. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And then that's going to go ahead and create that PDF. Now I have the PDF created on my desktop. I'm going to go ahead and open this um, with preview. And you can check it out. And it's interesting because um, the map actually looks really nice in, um, in PDF. Um, I don't know why, but I always feel maps look better um, once you export to PDF. I think it's because of the rendering. Uh, but basically here is your uh, very simple map. Um, of course, there's a lot more that you can do with this, um, but the point of this video was just to get you through the basic steps of how to export a map from PDF and work with base maps and geocoding. Um, in the future, what you should try to work with is bringing in other GIS data sets and, other, um, and actually creating um, GIS data layers on the map so you can maybe annotate or, or draw over base maps to create um, maps that have other purposes besides just showing a location. But anyways, um, this is how you do this, and I hope you uh, were able to make a quick, simple map.